Do you know that our planet has scars? One of them is located in North America. This scar can tell us many cool things about the history of Earth, but the most interesting thing is that it could change the appearance of our continents and break our world. But for some reason, this scar hasn't done it yet. And that's not even the most interesting part. The coolest thing about this scar is that it might hold a giant source of clean, cheap energy. So let's go to Kansas to find out what it is. So 1.1 billion years ago, a giant rift formed in the crust of our planet on the territory of the modern U.S. Midwest. It's called Broken Heart. This giant crevice is filled with solidified magma, and from afar, it looks like a real scar. But how did it show up? Broken Heart was an ancient rift valley, a huge geological fault forming elongated hollows in the Earth's crust. It occurred because tectonic plates had moved apart. It's like the details of a jigsaw puzzle that suddenly started to separate. At that moment, thousands and even millions of tons of magma spilled out from the depths of our planet. That event looked like a real apocalypse, lasting about 100,000 years. But then it stopped, and scientists don't know why. If the rifting process had lasted longer, then most likely the continent of North America would look different today or it wouldn't even exist at all. Right now, this fault looks like a giant horseshoe that stretches from Kansas north to Lake Superior and south to Michigan. But some studies indicate that the fault may be larger and extend even further south. And the width of the fault might equal the width of the Red Sea. After the rifting stopped, the entire valley got covered with hills and trees. The fault itself is covered with a thick layer of sedimentary rocks, so it's quite difficult to track. The most noticeable parts of the rift are in the Lake Superior area. Now everything looks calm and beautiful, but in the past, there were fountains and rivers of lava, earthquakes, a boiling pot on a planetary scale. All that remains of it are deposits of basalt, a dark, dense rock that forms from cooled lava. There was so much basalt that its weight pushed the valley deeper and deeper into the Earth's crust. Even when the eruptions and rifting stopped, the valley continued to sink because of the huge mass of the sediment. Then, massive sections of the Earth's crust on both sides of the valley began to contract, and the pieces of the puzzle slowly started to come together. This led to a large-scale ejection of volcanic material upward. And along with basalt, deposits of copper rock appeared in the valley. People mined this copper for about 8,000 years until the end of the 20th century. The copper mines were eventually shut down, but now it seems the industry is making a comeback. However, Broken Heart is not interesting to people just because of its copper reserves. It holds something more valuable and useful for our civilization. Scientists believe that this valley hides massive reserves of hydrogen. And this substance can help us switch to a cleaner, cheaper, and more efficient energy source. If hydrogen fuel becomes widely available, everyone will switch to it, leaving behind the costly, noisy, and polluting process of oil production. Now, I'll bet hydrogen is a remarkably familiar word to you. It doesn't sound like the discovery of the century, and people have been using it for a long time. On one hand, you're right, but not quite. 90% of the hydrogen produced by humans is used as a raw material for the chemical industry. Hydrogen is used to produce ammonia for fertilizers, methanol for fuel and solvents, and to purify crude oil. Manufacturers of glass, cement, steel, and other metals are considering using hydrogen at their factories for more efficient production. Hydrogen can become an alternative to fossil fuels, that is, oil and gasoline produced from them. Cars, ships, trains, airplanes, and power plants, all of these may switch to hydrogen soon. In this case, production can become cheaper and better for nature. But this will work only if we find open sources of hydrogen. You see, about 95% of the hydrogen we use is produced from fossil fuels. We gasify coal, oxidize hydrocarbons, and extract hydrogen from methane. 
all of these production methods require energy. But the worst part is that they lead to large emissions of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. But what if we find sources of pure hydrogen that don't require processing? Then we'll save energy for its production and make the planet cleaner. But where can we find such sources? Scientists say that there are many of them all over the planet, and one of the largest is located in the Rift Valley in the U.S. Midwest. But what's the problem with going and mining it? Well, it's not that simple. To extract pure hydrogen, you need three conditions. The first is the source of hydrogen itself, which is quite logical. The second is reservoir rocks, that is, natural containers where this hydrogen is stored. And the third is natural seals, which prevent the gas from escaping. In other words, these seals work like a cap on a bottle. They don't allow the substance to escape. So in general, it's necessary to find where hydrogen is released, where it accumulates, and where it's stored. When these conditions are met, natural resource extraction companies can start working. But how does hydrogen appear altogether? Well, let's go over the basics of chemistry. Hydrogen and oxygen compounds form water. This means you need to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. This process often occurs in nature. There are many places all over the planet where this happens. Scientists are confident that at least 30 U.S. states have hydrogen reservoirs. And if people detect them, we will accelerate the energy transition to safer and more efficient fuels. Thousands of cars drive around using gasoline. Many of you know the smell of exhaust fumes, that thick polluted air that's hard to breathe. What about electric cars? They must be improving the situation, right? Well, here's another problem. Producing batteries for these vehicles harms nature. The materials used to make batteries are lithium, cobalt, and nickel. Their extraction involves a large release of toxic materials, not only into the air, but also into the water. Transporting these batteries also creates a large carbon footprint. Producing a single electric car emits about 4 tons of carbon dioxide. To make up for that, the owner needs to drive it for at least 8 years. That's how long it takes to offset the emissions a regular car would produce. What about reliability and convenience? What will you do if the battery runs out during the trip and there are no charging stations nearby? This problem will be solved in the future with the growing popularity of electric cars. Now, Scientists believe that over the past billion years, the Earth's crust has split enough water into hydrogen and oxygen. Our planet keeps this gas in the ground, waiting for us to start using it. According to calculations, even considering all the technologies and production capacities of our civilization, the reserves of hydrogen in the bowels of the planet are enough to supply us with energy for 170,000 years. That's why the giant rift in Kansas attracts scientists from all over the world. Huge quantities of basalt and other rocks can react with water to release hydrogen. And now scientists are looking for places where this material accumulates and is stored. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.